Hey guys, Captain Foley here with you for another Captain Foley Captain's Log. I was going to say product review, but it's not a product review, it's definitely a Captain's Log. It is Friday, so that means another Captain's Log. I'm going to address your questions and comments from last week's, uh, starting first with the Captain Foley personal channel um, log, which it's the same on both channels, but um, yeah, so anyway. Uh, this one's from Cody Michaels. Uh, growing up in the 90s, I had a bunch of those Playmates figures, including that Scotty, Bones, and that awesome set of all the TOS figures. I played with them hard as a kid, and sadly, none of them lasted into adulthood. Now they seem all to be in every comic book collectible store uh, that go taunting me to collect them again. <laughs> They're never expensive. What irritated me as a kid is that you, go, you had to go three or four um, lines in before you got all the TNG crew in the Season 3 uniforms. And even then, Riker was, Riker's was ripped. Good times. Ha ha ha. <laughs> yeah, I have the ripped Riker downstairs. He's actually still in the packaging. Uh, I, f I got him quite a number of years ago, like 20 plus years ago. And uh, yeah, still in the packaging with the ripped uniform. Uh, I didn't know there wasn't one that didn't have the ripped uniform of Riker. That's kind of odd, but yeah, playmates for you. Uh, Zarkon D. Grissom says, oh, 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 I like the USS Foley intro. Better with the third nacelle off of the engineering hull than the top of the saucer. The other dreadnought designs always had me wondering how the engines worked with no impulse crystal due to the nice nacelle placement, the nacelle pylon replacing it into the saucer. Well, if you look at the top of the Foley class, there's actually two impulse crystals, one on each side of the, uh, the main spine of the, the saucer. Um, and just with the way that the third nacelle on the Foley class is mounted back and, and slides forward, there's actually a horizontal warp core in the part that slides forward. So that when it's connected to the main shaft with the main warp core, it makes a T-style uh, warp core configuration. But then when it separates, they both work independently, uh, and the horizontal one fires up and is be able to power the upper part of the starship. Uh, I have done a fully class Mark III that has the third nacelle on top of the saucer like that, but mounted back a little bit, uh, which I really like. I do like the Dreadnought configurations. Uh, three nacelles always looks great, so I had to do the Mark III version. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a story behind the Mark III. I needed to do an episode on the Foley class or a live on the Foley class where you guys can ask questions and stuff because I'm really proud of it. And uh, speaking of, if you guys want a Foley class model, uh, it's a resin model kit, 1-1000th scale, just send me a private message on Facebook or um, email me at trekyards at hotmail.com and just put the, in the subject line Foley class model. I will get the information to you how you can order one and hopefully we'll see a few of them being built. Uh, quite a few people have ordered them already and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you know some finished Foley class models for sure. Uh, Captain Ron Phillips, hey Cap, have you played the new Discovery content for Star Trek Online for their ninth anniversary? All I gotta say is if you like Tilly, you'll love Captain Killy. Way better than the Klingon episodes with Takuma's sister except for Jeffrey Combs as Shran. Be warned, they cross the language barrier in an interesting way. Uh, I have played a few of them live, uh, of the Captain Killy ones, and I, I agree. They're fantastic. The Discovery ones, in general, I thought were pretty fun because you got to follow Tilly around, and she's got a nice, plump little booty to follow, so I have no problem with that. Um, but yeah, I've played a few of those as uh, uh, on YouTube Live, so you guys can watch and join in as I do that. So it's been really fun. Uh, I haven't got to the... I, I, th I think I've heard Shran at, or Jeffrey Combs as Shran on that, but I don't remember how they covered the language barrier unless I didn't get to that part yet. So, uh, Defiant Mr. Raven Productions, questions for next week and others, other BS, lol. Number one, what was your favorite Klingon look from season two so far, meaning which Klingon had the best makeup? Uh, probably the old guy with the, the, the gray hair that got killed in episode three. Um, by, well, by Laurel and Tyler, um, kind of by Giorgio as well. I'd say he had the best look so far, um, 
and Tyler. I mean, he looks like the TOS Klingons, right? Just saying. Number two, what is your favorite Discovery TOS movie era phaser? Um, well, the Discovery phaser is really cool, actually. Uh, it's one of the things I think they did nice. It's re nice reimagining from the Cage era to TOS with the three um, nos nozzles on the front. So that's really cool. I like that. Um, also the TOS phaser. The one from Star Trek 3 is, I think, one of my favorites, as well as the Assault phaser from Star Trek 6. Um, the phaser rifle, the TOS phaser rifle is cool, but it's also a 1960s sci-fi weapon, if you know what I mean. It's got that look to it, so there is that aspect of it. Um, the last, that last log I did include pictures of me with uh, TOS phaser, all thanks to my good friend Brad Tom Thompson. Um, <laughs> I forgot his last name in the last log and I felt really bad because... It was just on the tip of my tongue as I was about to say it, and I forgot. So he messaged me after he, he watched the episode. He, was, he said, LOL, my last name's Thompson. Thompson. So um, now, now i got to check and make sure it's Thompson and not Thomas. Why am I so s stupid? Thomas. It's Bradley Thomas. That's his name. Um, so there you go. Brad Thomas. Sorry, Brad. Don't kill me. I don't know why I said Thompson. I, I was thinking Thomas, and then I second guess myself when I started speaking, which is never a good idea. So, there is that. Um, number three, uh, this channel needs 100,000 more views, and what would a USS Batman look like? Well, thank you, I, I would like 100,000 more views. 100,000 more subscribers would also be great. But, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, a USS Batman, I think, would look very much like a, just basically a bat plane as the saucer with some really funky place in the cells. I've seen a few that have been done over the, the years and they look kind of cool. So it could be anything. Um, but now I've got to go back and check the other channel's captain's log so that I can get the questions and comments from that one. Um, you guys are great. I really like the people on the Captain Foley personal channel. Every time you guys comment, on a video, I try to like it. I try to answer your questions or comments if you have anything to, to say uh, in the comment section. I like to address those because I have a much smaller community again, uh, much like I did with the original um, when we started Trek, when I started Trek Yards. Um, so it's nice to be able to hit all your questions and kind of be more personal with you guys, which is nice. Uh, I've recently uploaded a lot of uh, re uploads. Uh, which I will continue to be doing until I get caught up because I'd like them backed up on this channel. Plus, you guys are really enjoying them. A lot of you are really enjoying them. I had a comment that said, stop with the re-uploads already. No one cares. Um, that's not the case at all, but that kind of bugged me. Uh, so I've also re just re-uploaded all of our uh, Mission America trip. It was a 2016 trip where we went from L.A. to Denver to Montreal to Ticonderoga, New York, back to Montreal, and then home. Uh, that was a great trip that me and Samuel did, so if you want to check that out, if you missed the Mission America Tour the first time around, there's some great stuff in there, plus some interviews and things that we did, got while we were on the trip. So, really fun, and you get to see Sean Chernjo, Rob Bonchoon, um, Vic Mignogna, Todd Habercorn, uh, Sean Turinjo, and a bunch of other people, Rick Sternbach trying to think who else is in that video. Lots of people. Check them out. If you're interested, you want to see some cool history of Trek Yards, it was great. That was the first time I met Samuel in person. Uh, so we have a fun, I did a captain's log like every day, kind of documenting what we're doing. So it was really fun. So check it out. But getting back to the comments here, um, Dale Stafford says, um, <clears throat> I was surprised and very pleased when I clicked on this video and heard my name and comment referenced. It's great to be able to communicate with you and the community and share our opinions and also get feedback. It was a very pleasant surprise. Thank you for considering my comment. Dale, I see your comments all the time. You always comment. You're always a great follower, so uh, no issues. I like to get into everybody's comments, but as you guys know, early on when I was doing my captain's logs, I did that. I got to everybody's, but then it got to the point where I was getting 100, 200 comments per captain's log, and I could not in any way keep up, so I stopped kind of addressing them. Uh, we're going to see how that goes. I kind of like this format, so we'll see. We'll, we'll do, do the best we can. 
Um, Jason Palette. The movies did the ship so bad because of licensing and JJ Bad Robot wanting to get paid. They had to change them enough so they get their royalties. There's that, and there's also the fact that JJ wanted his vision um, being considered as Star Trek. He wanted to, re he wanted CBS to remove all of the original TOS toys and stuff from the shelves at the time because he didn't want any confusion between his movies, his Enterprise, and the stuff that has had a 50-year 50, 50 legacy. Well, not 50 years at that point, but and CBS kind of laughed in his face and refused. So, as they should. Um, that's why he makes his Enterprise so unique. That's why it's blue instead of red bizarres. Things like that. He wants it to stand out and be his own thing. He basically pissing all over it, saying, this is mine. Look, look, look at what I did. This is mine. And uh, leaving his mark on it. So, it is what it is. Um, 40 Mike says, uh, so you're saying that if the shields go down, you wouldn't want to have as much protection as possible. You do realize how often the shields go down, right? Why wouldn't you want both a, a solid design with a few weak points and shields? Don't you want every possible advantage, even if it's a case of emergencies? Yes, I totally agree with that. It's the, the bridge is nestled it's nice and securely in the middle of the saucer, like it is on the Federation-class Dreadnought, is a great idea. It does add extra protection. I, I get it. Um, but... You know, most of the ships, they're on, it's on top, so it's just, you are as good as your <laughs> defenses, uh, sadly. But, um, KG313, Playmates always did a fantastic job. I have a few TNG figures from my childhood stashed away. Thanks for another great Captain's Log. Live long and prosper. Well, thank you, KG313. Same to you, my friend. Stephen Fenton says, where do you get those displays that were on the monitor, please? Um, well, we have a, there's a Trek Yards playlist of all the Elkars. All the Elkars I got from elkars.uk.co.uk, uh, whatever the UK uh, designation is. Um, also, screensavers, things like that. You just do a screen capture of them, make them into a video. You can put them in a playlist. Uh, that's the best way to do it. So they're from a variety of different sources, those Elkars. Um, but I get that question all the time, have for five years now, so I should just put it in the description. In case you're wondering where the L cars come from, here's the answer. That might be a good idea. Disruptive Innovator, your opening just reminded me of how warp travel used to feel before JJ made the warp drive into a hyperdrive. Big ships now get tossed around like they are single engine planes in a strong wind. Yeah, and the, the last episode of Discovery, episode 8, well, episode 9 will be out by the time this Captain's Log is, but episode 8, uh, if memory serves, is the name of the episode. You see the exact same scene from Star Trek Into Darkness. You see the Discovery, like, like leaning forward, like, through the tunnel, and you see the Section 31 ship behind it going, just stupid. I hate the new warp effect. It just it makes no sense. So thank you for the, the compliment on the Foley class. Thanks to Barry Chapman as well for making that animation. So... Um, Mega Neutrobite. Well, now that we know what the next Trek Shards merch should be, bear knives and stone skins. <laughs> yeah, I, I screwed up, man. I, I have dyslexia. I have mild dyslexia, and sometimes it rears its ugly head. Some days it's worse than others if I'm tired, under-caffeinated. Uh, so I apologize. Obviously stone knives and bear skins, but... Uh, Tyconius. You're welcome, and I have the have the rifle currently and lovingly displaying with the rest of my TOS items. T uh, type 2 phaser, tricorder, and communicator, LOL. Tyconius, I think that might be Brad Thomas. Let me know, Brad, and don't freak out that I called you Thompson. I'm so sorry. Uh, my middle name is Thomas. My son's name is Thomas. So I thought, no, that's not right when I meant to say it. Dale Stafford again. I vividly remember those female Klingon action figures being controversial, and I believe they were taken off the shelves when some parents complained about the cleavage. I have those in the package. I really should part with some of these that I don't have room to display. There's nothing wrong with the, the, um, the Klingon cleavage. I, I think it's great. I mean, parents that say those kind of things, like the Slave Leia toy debacle that happened like last year or the year before, it was just entirely so stupid so stupid i get so sick and tired of that kind of mentality in the world today it just it makes me sick so 
Uh, Dave, Dale Stafford again. The Type 15 is like the Volkswagen Beetle of Shuttle World. LOL. That literally made me laugh out loud. Not in the internet sense, but literally by making audible laughing noises. Anyone can build a Type 15 shuttle with a few pieces of plywood, although Andrew Probert's design is controversial. I can't deny that it's much curvier and more and more in line with the design of the Enterprise D, so when they introduced that little square box, I thought it seemed really cheap. So your comment that is the Volkswagen Beetle is so on the spot that it made me laugh. Uh, it's more like a smart car, to be fair. One of the little smart cars, but... Uh, thanks a lot. I don't know how important you don't know how important your content is to many of us. Well, thank you. That means so much to me. Um, I get these negative comments like, "Why are you uploading things? Nobody cares." But yet, I have good views on those videos. People obviously care. So thank you. That means a lot. Uh, Z German, LOL. Yes, you know you love. We know you love Klingon cleavage. So so do we. So there you go. I just love all cleavage. To be fair. Uh, patient zero, uh, copyright paranoia can just as easily kill an IP as protect it if not done right exactly. Uh, one of the best TOS war games made now has no future or much of a player base because the owner went bonkers and bullied fans into fan made project. The game was very popular was popular enough to warrant the heavy handed approach and he made it die even faster. That's sad to hear. And then F fourteen D D fan puts it just said nice video. F fourteen D fan, I like you. I hope you're doing some videos because I love the F fourteen D. It's a fantastic ship. So that is it, my friends, for the comments and questions. Thank you very much for those. Please feel free to put more in this video. I will address them in the next captain's log. But I have a few things I'd like to show you guys. So, first and foremost, um, just got the truck yards stickers in. These are they're about com badge size you can see. Um, got 50 of them. Sticker Mule uh, had a fantastic deal because I bought those sample coasters, the Trek Yards ones I showed a little while ago, and uh, they sent me an email saying they have 50 stickers for $9. I was like, damn. Because these 50 stickers, they're good quality stickers, they're fantastic. Um, they're generally $49 for a roll of 50. I had to scoop that up. So Sticker Mule, if you guys are interested, check out Sticker Mule tell them Trek Yards and Captain Foley sent you. Uh, they got some good deals. I tried to get more, but there was only one per customer, obviously. So so I got these. These will be like giveaways or included with perks when we do our upcoming Indiegogo campaign, which will probably be in April, we're thinking. Um, but we'll talk more about that when, when the time comes. So, so yeah. Anyway. Also, my friend Dave uh, Blappy just had a birthday. We were, got together for his birthday to have, a, have some steak and beer. And he brought me a few books that he was cleaning out his um, book collection because he had just he's just moved and he's really doing good things with his life and he's going to be he's on track to become like a really successful guy. So anyway, he wanted to get rid of some of his books. He brought me his uh, books. So I just want to show you a few of those right now. I feel like I should move over here so you can see this stuff behind me, but. So first off is the full color comic version of Star Trek The Motion Picture. So it's always good to get novelizations of the movies. And this is literally, this is a comic version. So it's the complete comic but in like novel form which is really cool. So that's awesome. Next up is Yesterday's Sun with Spock. Some of these I've read, some of these I haven't. Some of them I have copies of already, but it's always good to have more copies because you can bend the spine on these and actually read them. I like my spines to be all neat and un uncreased. Um, I hate people that just snap their spines when they're reading books. It's like, ooh, that makes me cringe. But if you have like one for display on your shelf, so looking all beautiful, and then one that you can like take out and when you're sitting on the beach or whatever, if you go on vacation to fold, like be able to like actually open up and not worry about that, that's fine. So uh, We also have the the Fate of the Phoenix. Um, haven't seen this one, but uh, a Romulan based story there, so that's cool. I love the Romulans. All new Star Trek 2 adapted by James Blish. Those are the original series episodes in novel form, which is a novel idea. <laughs> 
it's like getting a novelization of the movie. There's a lot more extra stuff in there that makes the makes it feel more realistic. So, Doctor's Orders. I have this one. It's not the best book, but it's an interesting read. Um, this is one of the ones I've actually had time to read. Um, so, Doctor's Orders. Uh, Star Trek photo novel number four, A Taste of Armageddon. So this is literally just stills from the show. Um, just telling the story of A Taste of Armageddon in with pictures. So it's like one of the uh, the new new voyages or uh, whatever the IDW comics are that do the same thing. Although they don't recycle the original stories. They tell new stories with the screen caps. Um, Planet of Judgment is another one. This one, a very, sh very short book. Um, I have not read this one, but looking forward to that. Uh, the Klingon Gambit. Again, have not read this one. I do own it downstairs, though. Um, great picture of a D7 there. And, uh, again, a very short one, which is nice. Uh, Corona. This is cool. They got the uniforms, the motion picture era uniforms. The ship looks very TOS though, so I'll, I'm not sure when this is set, but I'm looking forward to reading all these at some point. Spartacus, TNG novel. Have, don't have this one. Well, I, I do now, but Triangle. Again, haven't even heard of this one, so. Kirk's soul, Spock's life. Interesting. Uh, Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. I do have this novelization. I've had it since I was a kid. Um, I'm actually not sure where my copy is right now. It's probably down in the bookcase, but I'd have to go take a look. So that's great that that's back. That's it for that stack. There's one more stack, guys. Enjoy the view while I'm gone. <laughs> of all the cool collectibles. I try to make it different every time so you can see more of what's going on in the room, but... <clears throat> the Wounded Sky. This one I do have downstairs as well. Um, I've never read it though, so there's that one. Death Count. Another one. This one features Captain Sulu by the looks of it. I think it's Captain Sulu. Um, a saboteur is loose on the Enterprise. It might not be Captain Sulu, but um, probably isn't because the Enterprise has the battle damage uh, from just after the Wrath of Khan, so this is probably before Star Trek Three. I think there's a novel between those two. Um, so there you go, there's that one. Kobayashi Maru, this is one I read when I was in high school. Uh, I have this book downstairs. Uh, I love the little ship design they use there. It's very much like one of the ships that, from the uh, Space Flight chronology. We actually just filmed an episode of um, Trek Yards talking to Rick Sternbach about the Space Flight, Space Flight Chronology. So if you're interested in that, if that was one of your favorite books growing up, I have that one as well, signed by Rick. Um, stay tuned for that episode because it'll be great. The Lost Years. This one also I've read and owned downstairs. I also have the hardcover of this. So I have the hardcover a paper, and two paperbacks now. This is one I read in grade 11. I remember reading this in math class and drawing a picture of the description of the Enterprise after it was damaged in math class. So, And I went to Waterloo, Oxford District Secondary School in Baden, Ontario, if you guys are interested, or if you know any other fellow Crusaders, because the, the sports team were Crusaders, Waterloo, Oxford, there you go. Web of the Romulans. This is another book that I have, but have not read. Um, I'm a bad one for judging books by their covers, so even though... They definitely tell you not to. The Starless World. Again, this is one I've seen and I believe I have downstairs. Not 100% sure, but never read. Again, a very short book, so... Star Trek Amzadi. This is one of the first TNG books. If not the first. I know the Ghost Ship is another one with the Battlestar Galactica on the cover. It's one of the first ones, but... This one never had, never was interested. I'm not a big fan of Troy, but might be worth a read. You got an old Riker there and a young Riker, so. Star Trek IV, again, the adaptations by James Blish, which I have most of those downstairs, if not all of them. 
uh, The Covenant of the Crown. I love the picture on this one. This one I do have downstairs. Um, again, motion picture era style away mission uniforms and the refit enterprise with the Katinga there on the cover. It's such a great piece of art. One of the, that's one of the things I love about Star Trek novels is the art. Uh, Black Fire. I also have this one downstairs. have not read it though. Uh, so this one looks interesting. Again, it's the motion picture era. Um, that must have been when Dave was hot to trot for Trek. The Wounded Sky. No, we've done these already, haven't we? Yeah, we're back to the beginning. Sorry, guys. I wasn't paying attention. All right, guys, that is it for this Captain's Log. Thank you very much for joining me. As I said, please leave your comments or questions down below, and please check out all of the re-uploads, or at least the Mission America ones, <clears throat> that I did uh, on the Captain Fully Personal channel. They're a fun watch. Uh, you might have a few questions and stuff, because like I said, we visited Doug Drexler. We got to sit down with Doug, John, and Rick, all at J Doug Drexler's place. Um, went to Denver Comic Con, met a bunch of people there, uh, posted a bunch of panels. Uh, so that you get the journey of all that behind-the-scenes stuff as well. So it might be something you'd be interested in. So by all means, go check it out. And uh, let me know what you think. So if you want to do that and you haven't already subscribed to the Captain Foley Camp channel, please subscribe to the Captain Foley Personal channel as well as the Trek Yards channel. And don't forget to watch other content by us as well or by me. And by all means, come back, leave a comment, a question, and I look forward to seeing you again. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley.